One of the biggest factors that will contribute to how fast you build muscle, how quickly you respond to exercise and diet, how strong you can get, how fast you can run, how high you can jump, pretty much everything physical is your genetics. Your genetics play a huge role in how quickly you respond to exercise. All right, here's the good news. It doesn't matter, you're stuck with your genetics, so stop worrying about it. In fact, stop comparing yourself to other people. There's lots of factors that contribute to your performance and how you look, one of them being something you simply can't control, your genetics. So let's stop talking about genetics and let's start worrying about the things we can control. It's much more empowering and honestly, it's the only way to succeed long-term with this. Yeah, I had a realization with this one. Recently? recently. Yeah, another one. <laughs> what was the limitation? Well, uh, so my wife, I if she works out twice, okay? Mm -hmm. She looks like she's been working out for six months. Two workouts. Like, uh. she didn't work out for a little while. She went to visit her family, took some time off, couldn't get in a rhythm, comes back. And I swear to God, yesterday she's wearing like a tight, like like kind of like a skirt type thing. I'm like, damn, what the hell? I'm like, you look really different. I'm like, what did you do? Like, what's going on? She's like, oh, I worked out Monday and Wednesday. I'm like, okay. <laughs> she's got really crazy. Oh, yeah. And now my my younger kids it have- Sounds like a, the opposite of what I've heard a lot of people uh, complain. It's usually, uh, well, I know for me too, it's like my wife will complain that I can get lean like pretty quickly. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah. No, she's Build got she's got like these like like kind of like bodybuilder type genetics. It's cool because my younger kids have it, but I don't respond like that at all. So it's I see that and I'm like, man, it would take me. I mean, I, I respond fa faster because I've been training for so long. But I, I'm like I tease her. I'm like, if I had your genetics, man, you have no. I idea. don't know if I agree with that with you. I don't mm -hmm. know if I don't know. Well, first of all, in eight years that we've been together, I haven't seen you take a long enough break to to actually That's be right. able to measure this. That's right. That's exactly so, why. <laughs> so I don't know. If, I don't That's know if exactly I, why. I don't know if I believe that because I used to think that about <laughs> myself, and I re remember Katrina getting frustrated, be like, it's so not fair. You just you just switch it, and it's like you change so fast. Yeah. So, but what I do know about my genetics that and it, so it's a double-edged sword uh i definitely feel like i can switch the diet around i could uh, start training you and know I all can, the levers but yeah i can yeah. turn the lever i can turn it on real quick and I, I think that's more now than it was my like earlier years yes. like mm -hmm. i i don't think i had that uh ability say 15 plus years ago but i do believe i have that now but the other side of that is too man i i lay off like one week and it feels like i lose a lot yeah. So I, I, I swing back and forth quite a bit. So yeah. Okay. I feel like I could turn it up and change it really quick. The amount of work and effort that it requires me to be able to do what I do, look how I look, whatever is a lot. And I'm very consistent, I'm extremely consistent, probably to a fault. Um, and I've worked with, look, we've all been in the space long enough to where I don't think I have terrible genetics. I'm probably somewhere in the middle. I would, I would say if I had to guess, I just have been doing this a long time, but we've all worked with people on the higher end. Mm -hmm. And it's another, it's just another animal. It's yeah. like a, it's like someone who's really tall. That's rare. Like how often do you see people over six foot five, right? It's, it's, it's are there, rare. Te are there tests that they have to measure that now? Like, cause I'd love to get that done just to say, remember when, remember when I actually used to talk about that a lot in the podcast early on and people get so fucking pissed that you off. They have bad genetics. Yeah. yeah. I used to, cause I, you were a pro. Yeah. And so I was like at the peak of my training and dieting room yeah. and be like, Oh yeah, I have broken yeah. bad genetics. You like, have, you have a couple things working really well for you, which is you have really wide shoulders and a small waist and you have long muscle bellies. So those yeah. are two good things working for you. Right. But then like the muscle building, all that stuff, like you're not like, like, uh, no, I mean, yeah, I like have a, a tiny skeletal system, which yeah. is not uh, advantageous for packing on a lot of muscle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not big boned at all. And yeah. if you're not big boned, you don't tend, it's harder to, I think, to put on muscle, generally speaking. Yeah. And the opposite is true. When you are big boned, it may be harder for you to feel like you can lose body fat, but the benefit is you tend to pack on muscle easier. Yeah, yeah. So, see, my wife has really crazy, first off, she builds muscle super easy, and then she has long muscle bellies, but then she has it combined with small joints, which is rare. Usually you'll see really long muscle bellies and big joints. She's got small ankles, small wrists. So it gives her this look and, um, and she just responds very quickly. And I, I, you know, I haven't, you're right. I haven't given myself long enough time off. I know this, my brother is 10 levels higher than me with the genetics. My brother who works out here and there, he's not a fitness fanatic. It's not his field, right? He's, he does finance and he's, he's really good at that. He'll come in here and he'll rep, you know, 285, 315, just yeah, on he's accident. A moose. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I know I, I, I can see this, but my whole point with it isn't to complain. 
My point with this is you can't control this. Yes, right. Yeah. So forget about it. Like this whole like people focus so heavily well, on. Well, not only that. not only that, Sal, but I actually do. I do think that uh, in my point of bringing that up too was again not is also not to complain or say oh oh it's so tough for me. It's I I think for every disadvantage you have an advantage. Mm -hmm. That's my point of bringing it up. That's like, an empowering you, way you of thinking. You put more work into it. Totally. Yeah, yeah. So I at least would, and, would I value this, it as much? And this is my experience with with coaching and, and training clients for years is that. You know, the client is like, oh my God, it's so hard to lose body fat. Like l letting them like reframing it and go like, yeah, but we could pack on muscle with sure. you. And which means it's going to speed up metabolism easier than the the skinny kid who can't put on any muscle. And yeah. the skinny kid who put on muscle, the positive thing is, bro, it's easy for you to get shredded. So it's yeah. like, I feel like for every you know person that thinks they're genetically disadvantaged, they also have an advantage. Yeah, it's well, just, the truth is most people are in the middle. 99% of everybody's in the middle. So most people are not yeah. terrible well, And that or great. too, right? <clears throat> I mean, generally speaking, all of us are pretty much somewhere in this middle spectrum. Most of us are not these crazy outliers on right. either end. And it, within that spectrum, wherever you fall, whether it's farther left or far, farther right, the, if you're farther right, some of the you have some advantages that the people on the far left don't have yeah. and, and mm -hmm. vice versa. But there's also mindset. I'll ask Justin this question because mm -hmm. I guarantee you he's experienced this coaching uh, high school kids and obviously you played sports, so you know this. Some of the laziest people are the most gifted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hands down. Why? Why is that? Why are they so, why, why are gifted people lazy? Yeah. It, again, this Came is easy. attributed yeah. to the work. Yeah. If, if, you, if you could just roll out of bed and you can perform at a very high level and like people can't really touch, uh, you know, what you're doing out there in the field very easily. Like it's the motivation isn't there unless they're thinking uh, if, if their vision is bigger than that. Right. If they're trying to get into the pros and they understand like how much work they got to do, which you know, those are the ones that become the great ones is the ones that they, they combine both elements together of the work and the talent. But when you're younger and you, you, you just have all this natural talent, it's just, it, you cut through everybody like butter. It's too easy. Yeah. There was this one, um, sales guy who worked for 24. I never worked with them, but I worked out with them a couple of Bobby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Persian guy. Yeah. 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 Just like crazy strength and muscle gene crazy and the guy worked out every once in a while and i'll never forget he came to work out and i was working out kind of same time and at the time this was right after him and i when i when i was an assistant manager at 24 i was like the top sales guy and he was always he was the guy that if anybody could challenge me it was him he's very very talented so we knew of each other it's one of those mm -hmm. like friendly competitive things so when we saw each other it was kind of like that. Well, this is what it turned into in the workout, right? So he comes in a workout in my gym. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that guy. He does really well, whatever. And he's just kind of broad, you know, bit, you know, bigger guy or whatever. And we're talking. He's like, oh man, I really got to get back into it. I haven't worked out for a while and blah, blah, blah. And he slaps four and a half plates on the bar <laughs> and squats. Yeah. Like 450 pounds and he squats and it looks easy. It yeah. looks like I squat 135. And I looked at it, I'm like, what, dude? I'm like, you don't work yeah. out? So, oh, it's been a while or whatever. Like, what's your max? Like, what have you done? He's like, well, I don't really ever try to, like, hit my max. I've done 600. And I was like, okay, whatever, dude. Like, you're on another <laughs> level, you know? But yeah, I think uh, there's benefits and detriments, but I think the key is acceptance of the fact that, you, that there are things you can't change. Yeah. And then just focus on the stuff you can because uh, one of the worst things you can do in fitness, actually in, in life in general, is to compare yourself to other people. Mm -hmm. you, first off, you don't know what their their gifts are, but you also don't know their context of their life. You don't know other aspects of their life. It's not fair to you. And you may be comparing yourself to one aspect, but you may not even want to trade their li your life with them anyway. So it's just weird. It's, it's, just such, a, it's a self-defeating well, thing. Yeah. I don't, I, it just reminds me of when I was growing up. My dad's six, seven. He's huge, right? And it's and I idolize him and I, and I'm like this little kid. That's like, I, I know I'm not going to be that big. And I, I keep growing up and I'm like, I get to six foot and I'm just still like, I'm not, I'm not going to be that big. And it was frustrating to me, but what I can control is how strong I am. And so that was like something I just started to figure out. I'm like, well, okay, if you're going to wrestle and smother me, like I have to get stronger. And so it like promoted me to like go in the strength direction. So one day I flip him over and I'm stronger than him. Right. And it's just like, you got to look at it differently. You have a different perspective about it. Whatever is your weakness, like you can find a strength in, in a different direction. That's right. This, this idea that we're always, uh, pointing out who had things easier or pointing out privilege all the time. It's like, 
I, I don't know why why we assume that uh, things coming easy to you is a better way for life to work out sure. for you. And in all aspects, I don't care if that's for uh, you know education. I don't care if that's for uh, work and and being you know introduced to the right people to get a good job. I don't care if that's genetics around uh, of you know the build a physique. This idea that it coming easier for some people and then being privileged and that that is that leads to a more fulfilling, better life is so ironic to me. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. crazy because a lot what we talk about all the time about the journey is everything, right? Well, if the journey is everything and you have an easy ass path, like how fucking fun is that journey? Mm -hmm. Like it's not you're not overcoming, you're not having to figure things out. It's all easy for you. It's so funny how we sit on the other side and we like idolize or we admire or we envy these people that are in a better pl place of privilege. When it's like no, like you know where the the sweet sauce is being disadvantaged figuring it out, overcoming it and being successful. Fucking I'll tell you that person That's the all, best story always. That person always has a way more fulfilling life than the person that was that got to start ahead of on everything. It's also the yeah. it's also this is part of human behavior and it's, it's it's important to become aware of. Like my dad talks about all the time how he grew up. My dad grew up very poor. You know, just you know, six kids, cement house, you know, one room at one point, you know, it's it just poor. He was very poor growing up. And, I, and he always says how happy he was. And I said, man, I said, you tell me about how um, you bought shoes that were too big because your mom needed them to fit you for a long time. And then when they didn't fit, she cut the toes off. They became sandals until that didn't fit. And then you bought new shoes. Like you tell me these stories and you talk about how happy you were. And he goes, we didn't know we were poor. I'm like, what? And he goes, everybody else was like that. We didn't compare ourselves to other people because this is how everybody, everybody was. was. Mm -hmm. And boy, does that point to human behavior. It's like, we can't be happy if we know or perceive or think somebody else has more than we do. It's so crazy to me. It's something to become aware of because it's always going to be there. I don't mm -hmm. care what you have and how much you accomplish. If you have that mindset, you're always focusing on what everybody else has that you don't, you're never going to be happy. It's always going to feel that way. And it's terrible. It's something to be, like I said, to be aware of. Yeah, no, I think fitness is the same thing too. And I, you know, I do, I attribute the challenge I had as a, as a teenager, early twenties of trying to figure it out to the mastery that I feel like I found in my late thirties. It totally 40s. molded you into who you were. Yeah, like, You're yeah. one of the most resilient people I know. And, and I, I think, guarantee that's why. And I think that like, okay, so yeah, to the outside person or like my wife, who's only known me for 12, 13 years, she goes, Oh my God, you have so easy. But yeah, she wasn't with me 15 years before that <laughs> when I was, you know, banging my head against the wall, trying to figure this out and frustrated and struggling yeah. and picking myself back up. It's like, so, I mean, I, you never know, and you never know that where like people tend to judge right away. They see something and like, oh, that person, oh, they're so lucky. And it's like, well, you, ha you have no idea you don't. how they got there. And, you know, so to compare yourself to other people is, yeah. is such a, is, is stupid in, in any aspect, even finances or it's fitness, det everything. It's detrimental. All right. Today's program giveaway oh. is MAPS Anabolic Advanced, uh, and you can win it for free. Here's what you do. Leave a comment below this video. Uh, in the first 24 hours that we drop it, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And then if you win, we'll let you know in that comments section. It's also on sale, by the way. There's a final hours for the 50% off sale for MAPS Anabolic Advance. So if you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. J yeah. Justin, I want to back up a little bit. You talked about when you were able to finally flip your dad over. How old were you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was 16. Do you oh, remember well, you got him at 16, huh? Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember the because I remember That's the actually really good. I remember the first time I beat my dad at wrestling yeah. and I remember the feeling I had. I wonder if yours was similar. Like what did you how did you feel from it? Were you that young? You weren't that young, were you? I beat my dad. I submitted I, we, we used to do you know, we'd try and wrestle and who could submit each other. And I did it. I was I want to say 18. So I was old. Yeah. Damn. So, yeah. My dad wasn't afraid of my stepdad wasn't afraid of me until my like late twenties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took a long time. It took a long time before he was yeah. afraid of me. <laughs> I mean Yeah, I was I was just like an animal like getting after it like uh and yeah it, to to your your question like i i was like so happy immediately and then immediately right after that was like depressed like, isn't that weird just like oh i just kind of walked off like it was yeah it was you humanized totally him. Un and it was a surreal experience because it was like that was like my pinnacle the pinnacle goal was like i i'm gonna i'm gonna you know reverse this i'm gonna i'm gonna take him and like and, and and flip this off so uh he can't do this to me anymore and like really it was just like i don't know it 
it, it's really hard to articulate. It was like, it was one of those things where you're just like, you work so hard. You don't think it's ever a, an achievable goal. I guess that's, that's how it felt. It was like, I didn't think I'd ever be able to do it. And yeah. then I did it. And then it just kind of, and then he was weird about it. And I was weird about it. We kind of <laughs> walked away uh, <laughs> and we're just like, he's like, okay, I'm not going to do it. My dad's like, I'm not going to do that again. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, as same feeling. I, I, I got my, my dad and I used to wrestle. He was impossible. He's just, you know, he's just so strong and, and technical and whatever. And I caught him. I caught him with a, a, a leg lock and I, he tapped. And I remember at first being like, yeah, I finally got him. And then being like, my hero. Yeah. Like I just, I just beat my hero. And yeah. then it was weird <clears throat> afterwards. Although he, he was kind of like, and I think it's a moment as a father. Was he proud? Yeah. Cause it's. It was weird, but he was proud. Yeah. He was proud. Uh, but it was also kind of weird because I think at some point as a father. I don't think you wanted that early as a father. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a realization. I mean, don't you, I mean, that I'm, so that inspires me yeah. as a dad. Like when I hear those stories and yeah. I think about that stuff that like, and, and I don't, that you guys are, we're talking about physical capabilities, yeah. I think in all aspects, right? Yeah, anything. Like yeah. intelligence, like success. Business, like I think, whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, everything. Like I want, I want my son to have that bar where he's just like his, most of his life, he's trying to catch up to dad, right? And I look forward to that day he overcomes it. I hope it's not at 16 though. <laughs> <laughs> if you do a good job. Yeah. A little early. I mean, you're right. I guess, I guess you're right. So if I, if I do a really good job and he does you know, really catch all those things by 16, I have kids going to be killed. I have, I was more, you had a younger brother. So I had an older brother who had a lot of friends that were way bigger than me too. So it was you like, always I was always the underdog, yeah. the small guy that was like fighting everybody like as much as I could. So it was like, I think that's probably why it accelerated a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I had a kind of a moment like that early on with my oldest, I think he was 14 and no, <clears throat> maybe even younger, 13. And uh, he's a, he's a wizard at math. And that's, I'm terrible oh, at Oh, on the intelligence level. Yeah, he just came back. Yeah. He just had homework. And I said, oh, let me see what you're doing. And I looked at it and I'm like, hmm, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I'm like, my days of helping you with homework are over already. You know? <laughs> like, okay. You know? Yeah. So it's kind of like that. Yeah, but, no, know. it is like that. Because that's just a different, another area. Like, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And he is a super smart kid. So, yeah. And that's exactly what you talk about now you have with him. Like, he goes back and forth with you. I can only imagine your guys' battles. Oh, the debates? Yeah, the uh, arguing. Yeah. I'm just wiser. So he argues the way I did when I was his age. So it's like looking in a mirror. And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, I know where you're coming you're from. You're like, fuck, yeah, fuck, I used to sound like this. Totally, I'm sure you're totally. Like, I'm a getting bitch. a bit of that. Yeah, Ethan's starting to try and challenge my ideas quite a bit. Oh, like really? The table. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that Ethan's getting Just that way. Just a little you. bit. Yeah, yeah. He's been he's been really chiming in and trying to like edge his ideas, you know, against mine. And so it's good. Like we, we get into, and, and Courtney like gets a little awkward, you know, like starts to kind of get up and walk out and it's like, oh, it's getting tense. And then I'm like, it's not tense. We're just like, we're working this out you know yeah, we're having yeah. a nice little discussion about some of these things i so, love it i yeah. love debate and that kind of stuff but just it's got to be very challenging as a father to not uh when those moments come to not default to like what i think a lot of dads or parents do which is just like oh i told because i'm your dad well yeah, yeah. you know or and to do that and well be because like, you like, know there's stuff there's stuff that you that you know that you're yeah, right. i could smother and over power him with yeah. with facts or whatever and kind of but you know i want to hear his thought process yes yeah, so so this is so jessica's really good at this she's like we don't don't let the kids know your opinions so strongly or so often let them develop their own and then when they have their opinions however wrong or whatever you think question them just question them ask questions yeah, yeah. and uh this happened the other night we're sitting there watching the uh the republic first republican primary debate and my daughter was sitting on the couch and she's texting with her friends and, but she's also kind of hearing. Right. And so as it's going on, I'm commenting and I'm saying things and I feel, you know, Jessica hit me under the blanket. And I'm like, Oh, you're right. Cause I don't want, I want my kids to come with their own opinions. That's right. Then for me to ask and then for us to discuss, because what could happen is either a, they adopt your ideas without they, ever really or forming they their revolt own revolt against it. Or if they rebel, they know what to yeah. push up against. That's right. Which that's is, right. you know, probably even worse. So I mean, that's like, that's, that's so hard. That's though. leadership one-on-one right yeah. there. Yeah. That's, le that's leadership one-on-one. That's you learning to ask the right questions, pull them in the direction that you want to and not push them in that direction because you do risk that by forcing or pushing your ideology on your kid of them. You know what's hard about this? Rebelling. By, by the way, and, and uh, this is just, this was a learning lesson for me. I think you do good with this, Justin. You got older kids. Is it's a long game. Yeah. So why it's so challenging is that you get immediate results if you do it old school style. 
-hmm. no, this is whatever, blah, blah, they succumb, they submit, you win, right? But the long game, the dividends pay back way more. I'm seeing this right now with my two and a half year old. So mm -hmm. like when he does something that's supposed to or whatever, mm -hmm. I default to old school, like don't do that. If you do, I'm gonna put you over here or whatever. And it gets, it may get some immediate results right away. Sometimes usually it doesn't, they push back real hard, whatever, but it may, right? But uh, the other approach is slower. It's more conversational. It's more, um, what do they call it? So there's a term for it. It's a type of parenting. But initially you're like, just, you know, just tell them to stop doing that and pull them away. It's a longer play. But now I'm seeing it come out firsthand. Now my two and a half year old, he was his sister, his older sister, who's 13, right? They're sitting on the couch and she's playing with them. And then uh, a couple of times she was like watching TV. So he's kicking her. Okay. And he kicks her. She's like, ow. And you know, Jessica goes, um, is there, are you trying to get your sister's attention rather than don't kick your sister? Are you trying to get his attention, her attention? And he goes, yeah, I want her attention. And she goes, is there a different way you can do that? And he goes, uh, you know, to my daughter, he goes, can I please have some of your attention right now? Well, they're a two and a half year old. <laughs> and that was it. He stopped kicking her. But it's been a long hmm. process. There's been a lot of moments where he kicks and then we got to go through this whole process. And I just want to be like, you're not doing that. Stop, right. you know, type of deal. So it's a long game. The whole like ask questions, let them for Because you want to jump on over them and be of like, that's a stupid opinion, buddy. You shouldn't say, I mean, shouldn't this, say this, think that. I mean, you know? this just goes back to, I think one of the, the biggest differences of, you know, 25 year old you versus 40, you know, 40 year old you is that, you're patient, you're wiser, you're slower mm. to, to react like that. Like that's, the, I think that's one of the great, it's not to say that you can't be a 25 year old father and be a great father. I just think that at that age, you're still, there's still such a, 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 I mean, especially for men, right? We're still maturing so much and still figuring things out about ourselves that meanwhile, oh, now you have to figure things out about yourself and also figure yeah. out what's the best way to handle this kid. And I think a lot of times that gets muddied, especially if you add in stress and all the other things like that. And so the, the power of of being older and wiser and mature is that you have this ability to to feel those moments like I mean the, the the awareness that you even have to know that oh this there is a better approach to that like imagine you being 25 in that situation it's like oh yeah you probably just would end up arguing with your wife and be like no I don't you know and sometimes I still do because I it's you don't see the immediate result and mm. um and I grew up in a particular way and you know whatever yeah then you add in that element too like the way we are all raised right we yeah. all have different backgrounds and so yeah. you know a way the only way you know is the way well, you were raised so this was a this was a this actually leads to a cool discussion is that like, why was it a particular way for so long? And, and you know, why now are there better ways? Part of it, I think, this is my argument, and, and um, I've debated back and forth with my wife and other people about this, but I think there may be something to it. Is I think back in the day, first off, you had a lot of kids. You have a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. Second off, you don't have time to take your time I to have do lots things. Of thoughts around yeah, the because work, the you, work schedule and structure was pretty demanding. Yeah, but we have, the the challenges today are different yeah. than fifty years ago. Yeah, I mean a hundred yeah, years ago, are. especially definitely a hundred, yeah. definitely a hundred years, even fifty years ago. The thing, like there was, um, I mean, even up to like really your kids being abducted or hurting themselves, or like the challenges as a parent are just a different challenge. We live in a easier, better time for our kids, and so learning to and now like our and take advantage of it, yeah, yeah. And now our challenge is we teaching can monitor them, them from how to far. communicate. Where a hundred years ago it was like how to survive, yeah. yeah, how to live, how to not get killed. You, you know have what to I'm trust how your your kids can do the right thing, and you just let them out, you know, and, and play and go find their friends and and avoid traffic and avoid like people trying to kidnap them. Like <laughs> Listen, you said you, to trust that like whatever you told them was going to stick. Im imagine being in the, the early 1900s and just knowing that there's a very good chance your kid could end up going to war yeah, at yeah. a very young age. I'm teaching that. I'm training yeah. that kid. I'm training that kid at five years old different than I'm training well, here, my five-year-old today. Dude, this well, is why we had just, fables, right? We had all those scary, like, scary ass stories yeah. of like Hansel it and Gretel it, 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 get yeah. eaten by some and, you know, and it made sense then. It, yeah. made, it made more sense then. It's just different. That's all it is. Well, yeah. Let me throw a curveball at you, right? Think about all the time you spend with your kid, right? Mm -hmm. All the dedicated time you do with teaching. Now, imagine if you had seven. Like that alone, even today, yeah. with all of our luxuries, it makes it exponentially more challenging. Well, guess what? They had seven kids. My Matt and dad grew up with six kids. My grandfather, mm -hmm. nine kids. They grew up with all these kids. Plus, you cooked everything by hand. You mm -hmm. cleaned clothes by hand, washed dishes by hand. Dad was gone, and when he came home, he could barely walk through the door because he just broke his body 
working. Yeah. Mom's been breaking her body working all day long. The kids get out of the house because I need to be able to do these things. Otherwise, we have no dinner. You don't yeah. have any clothes that are clean. Yeah. I yeah. have to scrub the house. I have to do this and that. So the intensity all you were, was a lot different. All you're looking for yeah. is immediate effect. That's right. Yes. You, you yeah. don't have you don't have Quick. time to communicate to seven different kids that way and be patiently waiting for all of them to evolve. No, you're like <laughs> if you, like, you're like if you do this, I'll throw. Meanwhile, my shoe two at of you. them yeah. died because you were being so patient yeah. with the other two. It just yeah. doesn't work that no, way. No, it was so, a crazy yeah. time, and yeah. so you, you see that, and it's like this is why you know like, like shit. I mean, these kids used to used to, used to hit them. Well, why do you? Hit I your, mean, it's, how you can know, you hit your kids? It's a well, really good discussion and interesting point to bring up because a lot of times we tend to like shame our parents or our parents' parents for oh my, I can't and like we act as if like we're so much better and it's like oh they did what the fuck were they doing yeah. and they were so wrong. It's like I don't know necessarily if they were so wrong or so off. They it's were working that, with what they had. Yeah. That's, and the environment and it's so, and was it, completely it's different. different. It's just different. It's yeah. way it's way different today and. I do think that 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 approach and and is is more important today than say maybe a hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, and with seven kids, that's not what you're doing, dude. It just isn't. <laughs> you're not sitting down. And, no. Well, and, and, it's, and you know what it is? You're like, oh great, of, I have this yeah. two year old who's so smart and self aware, but then you let your other three kids die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying because <laughs> yeah. you're so busy communicating to your fucking one. I mean, you should have fucking slapped your kid for fucking touching the hot <laughs> yeah. stove that he caught on fire because you were being so patient with the other two. You know what I'm saying, way to go, dad. You know what I'm saying, you're so good. I know. Uh, I know. Crazy. Actually, different yeah. times man. i know i different, know it makes me laugh but you know today we have the we have a lot of advantages and we have the ability to learn and do this kind of stuff and then you, you produce like healthier i guess more self-aware children yeah you know but it's just the result hopefully i well, hope we, just, we don't we didn't produce just well a, now a you have to, wrong, you have to equip them to actually like be able to stick up for their own belief systems totally. and, and be able to be in immersed in this world where everybody's trying to indoctrinate Well, my biggest them. fear is that like we're totally wrong and we think we're so right and we yeah. turn, we just make a bunch of fucking mushy ass kids. You know what I'm <laughs> fucking, they can communicate so well to everybody but they're fucking weak as fuck and no, we, get, no. we get invaded and nobody can fight or nobody can do anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, here's yeah. a good example. Here's a good example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's it because the environment has changed radically so things have to change. Here's a great example. When my dad grew up, you got in big trouble if you didn't finish your dinner. Like, you didn't eat your dinner. Yeah, I know. Like, your dad yeah. would hit you across yeah. the table, okay? <laughs> or if you didn't eat it, guess what you're eating tomorrow or the next day. We don't know day. if we're going to have food. That's why. Don't be an asshole. That's why. Because yeah. if you are, if food is hard to come by yeah. and you're feeding your four year old, and you know that's why that made so much sense. That's again. why that made so much yeah. sense. Yeah. And if they're like, had, I don't if, like it. I don't if care you if, had a, like if you're it. old yeah. enough that you had parents that went through the Great Depression and stuff like that. I mean, I, I I always tell that story. I heard Dave Ramsey tell about his dad. Like, imagine my because my dad was a carpenter. My stepdad was a carpenter also. And to think like, oh my God, to, well, imagine my, my stepdad pulling old nails out. And to the, save them. To save them, to reuse them. That just seems so crazy. That's like pennies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why would you do that? But huh, you grew up in the Great Depression. Like you might have to well, bro, it if you give your if, your if food is hard to come by and your four-year-old is picky, mm -hmm. you're like, I don't care. I'm forcing you to eat this food yeah. because you need it. You need yeah. the food. And we might not eat three days. Or you'll, oh, you're, yeah. you're going to be malnourished yeah. is what's going to happen. Nowadays, you have to teach your kids how to choose, how to have a good relationship with food. That's what gets them to survive now. What you need to teach your kids now is how to not become super unhealthy with all this crazy food that's around. Back then it was like, you just got to eat what is in front yeah, of you. Well, it's so funny because like the, the virtues were different too. Like, like that's the same. I get in this with my mom all the time because she's very like thrifty, you know, and we'll go to like a, a bargain barn and thrift stores <laughs> and still buy just junk. And I'm like, mom, this is trash. You know, and like, <laughs> can you just buy something that's actually like packaged and new, Bro. you know, and give it to my kids? No, it's just trash. Bro, my mom. It's like, I found it. You know, like she's all excited. Like it, it's like a hunt. Like she thinks it's like a treasure hunt, you know. And I'm like, you're treasure hunting in people's trash. Yeah, I, like, <laughs> that's what this is, you know. I went to my I went to my parents' house the other night, and remember, my parents, you know, they grew up or whatever certain way. But then eventually, my they worked hard, middle class, everything's fine, right? But I go to my parents' house the other day for dinner, and I open her, uh, you know, the cupboard where the glasses are, and I see all these little glass like look like little glasses, right? But they have like threading on the top or like a cap would go on. Oh, they're, like, they're mason jars? Bro, there's like, there's like 10 of them. I'm like, mom, what are these? Reusing mason jars? What are these jars? glasses? It's like, oh, My family I buy the that. I buy these yogurts and then I, you know, you just, you wash them like they, we have little glasses now. Bro, we use, I'm like, my, my <laughs> why family, are you saving these my glasses, My family mom? 100% do <laughs> Bro, Dude. anything, if you got something like, like even like, um, my, my stepdad used to love that. What is that? 
that that pickled vegetables. You ever seen that before? Like they're like they're like a like big jar. Carrots. Yeah, and they're, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and they're yeah. in a jar. Like those were glasses for us. That are yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying you bought that, you ate the fucking shit that's inside of it. We washed it out, and now that's glass. Dude. Yeah. Hey, my I, 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 yeah. my my mom All used glassware is good glass. <laughs> my mom used to wash uh, disposable like forks and spoons and knives. So she'd, wa <laughs> yeah. she'd wash them and. And until I finally shamed her enough. Oh, all of our save all the Ziploc all of bags. Our, and it's not for the climate. Everybody, all of our plastic all of our plastic cups were like the super size McDonald's thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You buy a dollar ninety back there was a dollar probably for a super size cup. You kept that plastic cup. You get a lot of uses out of that thing, dude. So I told you guys you would wa wash them until the the fucking decals faded. Off. <laughs> I told <laughs> you guys I told you guys a story about when away. I went to the grocery store with my grandfather when I was a kid. We were, we were buying vegetables. <laughs> we went to go buy vegetables, which already oh, annoys him. Chips the food. Yeah, he's already annoyed. He's buying vegetables because he grows his own, right? So he's yeah. already mad that he's buying something. Why don't we just eat the ones we have? Why do we have to get these other ones? He's complaining the whole time. And he gets the vegetables and he pulls out, I don't know what are they called. They're not pliers, they're the kinds of like the pruning scissors, uh, pruning scissors. Yeah, pruning scissors. Yeah. Yeah. He pulls it out of his pocket. Like, no, no, what are you doing? And he goes, I'm not paying for the stems. And he starts cutting the stems off the vegetables <laughs> and leave them there while he puts the st in the bag to yeah, weigh them. That weight That's is so uh, going to add up. I'm like, what'd you save? Like 25 uh, cents? Not even. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're in a whole bag like of five cents. Probably, He's like, like, we don't eat the stems. Why are we? Why do we? He cuts them off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, old tricks, you know. <laughs> I know. Speaking of speaking of genetics, I was laughing the other day because my two year old, my uh, excuse me, my nine month old, she found her voice, and uh, it looks like she takes after my side of the family. So oh God, she's loud, loud, <laughs> loud as hell. Bro. Oh my God. She yeah. just sits there and screams. Poor Jessica can't projecting. Get a break, dude. She can't. Dude. She can't get a break. <laughs> she can't. So because she doesn't like loud noise. My wife is a quiet. She likes quiet. She likes the house to be peaceful. Yeah. And I grew up in chaos and loud, and nobody in my family knows how to talk without yelling. It's just the way we are. Yeah. And I'm the loud, one of the loudest ones in yeah. my family. And of course, I have two kids with her, and both of them are loud. And I'm like, sorry, honey. My daughter's just sitting on the floor. <laughs> ah! 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 And I'm looking at my wife. I'm like, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> She's just like, like this all shell shock. Yeah. Just like, oh. Uh, yeah. I told him, why don't you wear it? I told her, I, literally, this was serious. I said, why don't you wear like headphones, like this earmuffs, you know? She's like, because then they bother my ear. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you about. <laughs> Everybody's loud in the house. <laughs> Nothing we can do about it. Uh, anyway. So, good, so, so Adam, I wanted to make a comment and just get back at you for something. So one that's long it. time ago, we did this great live event. And there's this unspoken agreement that when we show up, we all dress eh, casual, you know? Casual. Yeah, and then right. you showed up and you looked sharp. Yeah. <laughs> and we were so she mad. He was all at you. decked out. Yeah. yeah like, Here like, I am. I'm the Adam. You know, these three pieces. Adam right. and the guy. And then today I didn't get the memo or what? And yeah. you did today, <laughs> bro. Slacking, son. We well, actually, our, we got our State and Liberty shirt. Hey, on. hey, I'm going to get, get the guys over at State and Liberty because they sent over a box of nice shirts that y'all are wearing right now, but uh, your boy doesn't fit in their, the sizes they sent to me. So I'm a double XL in all those, their shirts. So oh, their you're shirts. So, you're so big. I, I know. Hey, Right. That's why. I mean, I He's wish so I could wear that little medium that you got on right <laughs> now. But it's, 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 everybody would make fun of me even more. Like I'm trying too hard if I wore something it's like just that. Painted, I like it painted on. So, yeah, I, I'm a yeah. I'm a two X in their in their, well, bro, in their they, shirts. They, but so I love their stuff. This is dude. a dress. This is like a really nice kind of dress shirt. Great. The material. I mean, obviously you can't see it on the camera, but it's like almost feels silky. But everything's tapered because the problem that I have, I mean, you got definitely Justin and you have. If you work out, you have broad shoulders, small waist. Yeah. You buy a dress shirt. If it fits your shoulders and arms, it looks like a dress around yeah. your waist. But everything is made it's a parachute for, that comes down. Everything's made for athletic builds. So I, I go off the rack with the suit. Everything fits so nice. I mean, it's made for that, right? So that's what I love. That's what I loved about the company. I tell you what. One of the other things I love about these guys. So I, I uh, the audience knows I'm the one who talks to like all of our partners and works out a lot of these deals and stuff. The deal maker. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna that's gonna see if that sticks. Right? Yeah, it think, will. Uh, so you know. I, I always tell them, I always recommend for them to do things like this. And it's only a few that ever do it. I don't know why, but, and I'm so excited about what, what they are doing over there. So they're doing a giveaway. And like, I'm like, one of the best ways that you guys can get leads from the audience is to do great giveaways. Instead of us always just talking about the same stuff all the time is put together some cool giveaways. And so they're like, all right, that sounds awesome. What can we do? 
So we're doing a giveaway with them, which is I think this is probably the, one of the best giveaways. Wait, we, is that real? Is that really the giveaway? Yeah, this is so that's crazy. It's four days, three nights at our Park City place. State and Liberty is paying for it. So four four days, three nights at Park Park City. In addition to that, a two thousand dollar gift card to go shopping there. Just to go on a little bro. That's shopping a street. that's a that's a fitted fitted suit or as tons Dude. of shirts and slacks that you could. Fit. That's a hookup, right? And there. and the house alone. Yeah, you're talking about when you combine the the price of the place of Park City and all that, that's like a four or $5,000 giveaway. Yeah. yeah. So, so how, for people dope. who don't know, we have a place in in, par, in, the, in Park City that we is- some prime rib every night. It's optimized for uh, fitness and health individuals. So it's a, it's a nice place. There's a movie theater, the whole deal. There's a gym in the garage, sauna, cold dip. You can take advantage of red light therapy. The jacuzzi, beds are optimized. Steam jacuzzi, room. Jacuzzi, steam room. It's literally like optimized for by the way the fit uh, help people uh, at movie theater and the arcade just got there. Oh yeah, yeah. so we got one of those like old school where you sit the tabletop down, ones? tabletop ones. <gasps> it's got like fifty of like the old school like galactic. I haven't even got a chance to go there and play. I go, I fly out Dude. next weekend. Yes, I used Katrina to play that out. at a few like the local pizza places. Pizza place. Yes, and, and then there's an A and W root beer like actual like burger joint. Yes, that had that. It was like a Pac Man. It's a game in Frogger. Yes, yeah. I played that. Game. One of the things. Game. One of the feedbacks from the Utah property that we've gotten from people is they absolutely love. So we've also, when you get there and you arrive, aside from getting some cool mind pump goodies and stuff, there's also like a list of all the things that we love to do, restaurants, drinks, things that like that. And people are starting to like do that and follow the list. And that's been some of the most positive feedback. And the idea of this place for the audience is like, I, I just want to keep making it better and better. So as audience gives us feedback, oh, that'd be cool if it had this, or if you guys told us about like, that it, like as it, anything else that we've done in this business, I promise for it to evolve and improve. It's already a sick place, but I mean, I really want more and more people to give the feedback on what else it could have or what else could make it better. But right now, it's pretty like pretty sick. Easter eggs of like your photo shoot. Uh, well, yeah, from swings. Yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah, actually, that would be, <laughs> well, so okay, so we just strategically place those. So parts of the house. originally, when we did this, right, this is giving the audience a little behind the scenes like conversations. Like, so we had no idea. Um, it, we we hired a property management. Uh, team to to manage that right, so we pay a company to to help advertise it and, and help fill it because we didn't know what the power of the podcast or you know it's a location how many people would actually go and book it out not knowing so we we did that partnership we signed a deal for a year well come to find out ninety eight percent of all bookings are through the sh from the show so. Because of that, we didn't yeah. like really hardcore mind pump, Go full out, mind pump. Yeah, yeah, outfit the house. But I think that you're gonna see that for those that that have already been there, that return. Yeah, like we're gonna continue to put more maybe Easter eggs and cool like mind pump stuff mm -hmm. in the house because it was more neutral. Because we we're like, this will be really weird if you don't know about yeah. the show and you book <laughs> and you're like, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> a bunch South of pictures, sardines, bunch like, of pictures of them, <laughs> pictures of themselves in the yeah. house and stuff like that. Like yeah. this is weird. Like yeah. who are these guys? Yeah. <laughs> So we Doug's we, dark chocolate. We didn't yeah. know, but it's it's. I uh, would say Justin's cheese, but no. yeah, it's. Oh, uh, okay, why are you gonna do that? Why are you gonna Just a sore. Why are you gonna do that? He's super Man. Sore, sore about can't, that. Can't eat cheese anymore. <laughs> I mean, is it, this episode's edge. probably gonna air before the the food sensitivity test, right? Yes, it will. Yeah, well, yeah. well, well you'll wait. find out why now Justin you know. ain't eating the cheese anymore <clears> and why he's so sad. <laughs> at the moment, it's not even sad. I'm angry. Hey, are yeah. you? <laughs> That's because you don't have any other feelings <laughs> that you don't express between angry sad, and happy. Sad is just angry. Yeah, like, like, did I you turn it into that immediately? Yeah. By the way, the if you're interested in this contest, which is crazy, if you want if you want to enter to get that four days, three nights, and the two thousand uh, dollar gift card, we made a link. It's stateandliberty.com forward slash. Uh, mind pump, and then it'll tell you kind of what you need to do there. So, did you ever watch the Balco thing? I know Justin did. I watched a lot yeah. of it. Uh, so I was, I'm very familiar with the whole thing. That was when I was into that whole space. So I remember Victor Conti. I remember Snack Supplements, ZMA, the Clear, ZMA. which was what was called TM something. There's their their steroid that they made that that was technically legal. I remember the whole deal. Marion Jones. I remember Marianne all that. Jones. It was crazy, crazy. Like ben Johnson. So so yeah. you know what's unfortunate. Ben and I want to know if you felt you guys feel the same way too. Um, you know, of course, like he he I mean, it drug his name through the mud, right? He's the guy who did Balco and he's so he ruined baseball, what some people will say. Like, I mean, people that just He resurrected baseball. I'm sorry. hundred percent. It's yeah, so crazy. I know. It's so, uncomfortable to say that, but it's true. It's well, true. I mean, there's some people that get really upset about I mean, here's the thing too, like everybody was doing it. 
You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's another part that you don't really like, like, like you, unless you understand or you're a part of been around enough of these professional athletes, like they've been doing it for a long time. He just found a better way to do yeah. it. And what sucks is that because of all the, all, all the negative stuff that came with getting caught with all that, it actually, unfortunately didn't highlight his brilliance as far as like a, like a programmer, yep. like somebody who like, I, that was one of the things yeah. I was most fascinated with. Like, and nutrient like bro, yeah. okay. I get it. You took some of the best athletes in the world and and you, and they win championships. Okay, so most people look at that and go like, oh. That's, but when you take somebody who's already peaking and already like doing all the practice, doing all the stuff, and get them to break world records and get them to move, yeah, I mean, two it's like you. It's like the analogy sprint. you bring up about everybody thinks it's so easy to be a billionaire just because you started off with a, a million or a hundred million. Like, no, it's not. No, it's harder. It's harder. It's yeah. it's it, that person taking is, a taking a second off of a six six second quarter yeah. mile is. so so hard. That's right. Taking a second off of a 15 second quarter mile, not yeah, that hard. Unreal. That's right. Yeah. Or taking a kid who's just like started training and improving their. Yeah, their I, you could double my speed in the sprint very easily. Right. right Cause there's Cause no effort. Train in that. Sprint, but if yeah. you were, you've been, this is 20 years of yes. you doing that, like yeah. getting an extra second is incredible. Yes. So what's unfortunate is uh, the, 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 the loss of like how brilliant. He, the, Cause he didn't just do, he was. didn't just put them on steroids. No, he put the, he, he did their diet. He did nutrient testing. Yep. He was testing signs of overtraining. Of yes. Like w way ahead of the, way ahead of the game. Here's what I didn't know. And I didn't know it because I'd assumed it. I didn't know he wasn't a doctor uh -huh. uh, for years and years. I thought Victor Conti yeah, I didn't yeah. know was either. a doctor. Yeah. He's not at yeah. all. Yeah. He's just a smart dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. it. I, and another reason he why just I just learned yeah, on the fly. Another reason why I think it's so, kind of crazy. And cool. You know why I thought so. he was a doctor? Cause the old commercials for snack, uh, ZMA, ZMA is zinc magnesium. Because he, he wore, wore a lab coat. <laughs> lab coat. <laughs> That's the old school hustle, dude. Yeah, and he sure. wore. He had the mustache. Did we do a video where we put you in a lab coat? Yeah, yeah did we, we do that? One like, that like, yeah. as a, like as a like as a tongue, tongue in cheek. It's yeah. Just, it's, yeah, it's an immediate authority grab. Yeah, yeah. Right if you have away. books behind yeah. you and you're wearing a lab coat, <laughs> that's you know? the that's the Ty Lopez. Yeah, he's got yeah. books in it. He's got his Lamborghini in the in the garage with a bunch of books. Like, who puts their books in the fucking garage, dude? That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. But I mean, that's about all comic books behind. Me, you know. <laughs> but I did geek. I geeked out on seeing how he, like the way he programmed them for their breaking the records, was just absolutely. It was. Every, ahead, it was so ahead of its time. Everything was uh, programmed together, mm -hmm. and that's what it takes to get someone who's that good a little bit better. It's just, it's insane. And I feel like everybody now follows that protocol, but that was what, to me, of all the stuff in that documentary, that was what they I was like. They put the most attention on the steroid that he bit, that he did. Yeah. But the reality, I'm going to say something very controversial. Yep. The reality is of all the things he did, that single factor probably, if you combine all the other factors and compare it against the steroids, probably played the smaller. Exactly factor. my point. And mm -hmm. you could have gave the same steroids to a thousand other coaches. By the way, they, they were, were all on steroids. Yes, they were I, just on their, on that's what I mean. Ones, yeah. That's what I mean. You could give that, that the same steroid stack that yeah. he was, you know, the secret clear stuff yeah. that he was giving to his people, to all these other professional coaches yeah. and trainers and doctors that would be prescribing to other professional athletes and they wouldn't have seen the same results. So here's, here's an uncomfortable fact that people don't like. All the people that you see that perform at crazy, ridiculous levels, if you took them all off steroids, they would still perform at crazy, incredible levels. They yeah. still, you still wouldn't come close. They're like genetic freak. Yeah, look at like Ronnie Coleman- was Mr. Olympia for, I don't know, eight times. Okay. He was this, this, the craziest looking bodybuilders all look crazy, but Ronnie Coleman, even till now, you just look at him and be like, what the hell? He was top 10 Mr. Olympia natural. Yeah. Natural. So yeah. naturally, he got to a place that none of us in this room could ever get to with all the drugs in the world. Yeah. We would never even come close. And that's where he was natural. Then he, then he finally took steroids and then he became Mr. Olympia. Then it was, yeah. But insane. just, just Flex Wheeler was the same way too. Flex Wheeler's Flex natural Wheeler had time. one of the most amazing epic physiques you've ever seen in bodybuilding. Natural for most of his career gets to on steroids later on and then blows everybody out of the water. That's like, crazy. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. You, uh, speaking of sort of iconic <clears throat> characters, uh, did you guys know that um, uh, Andrew was telling me this earlier that Disney actually might be, um, I guess, I don't know what the term would be, but like releasing uh, Mickey Mouse might be up basically for the public domain. Be what? Because actual Mickey Mouse? Yeah, because copyright, I guess, it, it only goes up to like 95 years yeah. and then becomes public. Oh, I didn't domain. know that. And so Steamboat Willie was like the first video that uh they can't reapply. So Mickey Mouse had uh, you know, was part of it. So that's the only one that's gonna be 
basically owned still by they have Disney. to have the, like the first right to refusal the first right there's got to be something. to renew right that's got to be <clears throat> right doug well i believe there's a time frame that you can have a copyright for so andrew was talking about it it's the steamboat willie version which is that, the that character oh, that is going into the public domain well, apparently what, yeah well that's because it's the original one yes yeah, exactly. and then the next one will be what five more years later right well yeah it'll maybe start working that, its but, way i would think yeah yeah, at That's some point, I suppose that one will go into the public domain sure. as well. Mm -hmm. just seems but the question seems I have though, for you is: so is it? Uh, do they? Can they not like renew that again, or is it like now it's it's free? There game? might be a limitation. There might be a limitation. Now, on I would that. It seems ridiculous though. If you created something like that, you should have you know. That's like the indefinite whole company's identity. Yeah. Well, that's okay. So I think there's two pieces here. One, I'd like that there's limitations on copyrights because that opens up the market, and you don't want things to be indefinite. However, really, I do. Yes, you don't want that. You don't want a drug or a product to always be owned, but at some point you want things to go generic to become way well, cheaper. Yeah, with drugs. Well, there, yeah, sure. there's a difference between like drugs yeah. and formulating a formula well, versus I was a, a, a you, that's somebody's uh, I was gonna creative say, idea. Right. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say that's wrapped I, in their business. I was going to say I think this may be in a different category to where did, now if they created it and they did nothing with it for nine to five years, I don't think they'd have a case. But the fact that they continue to they built run their it. business is still part of the brand. I bet you they're going to be able to take it to a court and say, hey, look, this is still a big part of our brand. Yeah. In fact, this is the crux of our company. I would imagine, right? Then they yeah, probably will get that's, that's what I would imagine. That's you know? what I was like. I was like, man, you're losing Mickey Mouse. Like, that would be crazy. Yeah. So I wonder what, like, and then what it would cost. Like, do they, they like, it's probably a, a fucking money grab, right? It's like, it's probably a way, like, well, you have to go based off of what the value of it now. <laughs> it's, it's like, $10 trillion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you could keep it. It's $10 trillion. Yeah. Are you looking for no some ducks? Can Disney renew the... Okay, yeah, what's it say? No, Disney cannot renew the copyright for Mickey Mouse. The copyright will expire by law in 2023. Disney cannot obtain a Mickey Mouse copyright extension. However, Disney owns trademarks for Mickey Mouse. Yeah. So trademarks is not so, copyright. So I have the definition of the U.S. copyright law. So U.S. <coughs> copyright laws grant the creator of con content ownership for 95 years, which means famous works eventually enter the public domain. Legally, that means anyone can now copy and reproduce the 1928 version of Mickey Mouse without permission. Right, but the, but there's also trademarks for Mickey Mouse, which means you're Can't limited. Use a name, yeah. So you're probably going to see us come up on really porn out T-shirts and crazy. <laughs> Really? What'd you say? <laughs> what did you just say? Steamboat Willie well, porn. Look out for Steamboat <laughs> Willie porn. That's all I'm saying. I, I hate to break this to you, but it probably already exists. So basically, I care about so stuff. basically, all that's right. all that like the 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 biggest thing that could happen right Google now is I can make a T-shirt with Steamboat. <laughs> I can make a T-shirt with Steamboat Willie on it. I can't even say Mickey Mouse though, but I can just put him on a shirt and then sell. Yeah, the shirt. can I just say something real quick? Is right. that okay? Is that okay. Wouldn't that be the coolest nickname to have if you were a dude? Like, oh, that's Steamboat Steam Steam Willie Steam over there. Willy. Sounds pretty awesome, doesn't it? Where did it come from? What's the origin? Oh, well, it's the cartoon. Um, no, I, yeah, but where did they get it from? I'm sure it's named after somebody or something. Oh, well, I mean, he was on a steamboat first off. Well, that's thanks. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> job. thanks wow. Doug. Yeah, that's, that's where we have. You I didn't there. catch that part of it. <laughs> By the way, Doug is Captain Obvious. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> you're asking me how else would I know? <laughs> I mean, I'm familiar with the, the video, right? Him whistling, and he's got, yeah. the, and he's on the steamboat. <laughs> but I'm sure I don't know where the Willie part came. It's from. probably named after. Yeah, it's probably named after a character. What I just I just learned about something that was named after a character. I was surprised. I think I shared it with you guys. I don't know what it was. Yeah. Well. Okay, so the title of the film may be a parody of Buster Keaton's film Steamboat Bill Jr. Oh, wow. Well, there you I go. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> old time, old timey stuff. Old time, yeah. I'll yeah. go ask my grandfather. So yeah. I, I guess it really, I mean, it makes for good news and conversation, but it really doesn't matter. Doesn't mean much. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's not. Come on, let's be honest. Can you buy a t shirt now made in China with a picture of Mickey Mouse on it? Yeah, yeah, no. right. It you just really says, could. yeah, Mickey Mouse or something like that. I, you know, I don't think you, I, I mean, maybe Doug, Doug's more into the copyright stuff Mousy for us and trademark on the back end. I mean, if you're a company and you, there's got to be a number like where it makes sense, right? Like Budweiser, like, do you really care if someone's like made a few thousand dollars off of like your branding? Like, I feel like that's, you don't, you don't, you don't. Depends. Up, yeah. I would say it depends. At most you say, to, yeah. you maybe you send a cease and assist to scare yeah, them, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but you're not going to file. You're not going to go, you're not going to hire lawyers over. A yeah. I don't see that hurting Disney. I don't either. Basically, yeah. yeah. I yeah. want to ask you guys, did you guys try yet? And they're going to make me mad if you say no. So uh -oh. careful. Did you guys try the performance stack, the Organifi performance stack? You mean just the pure and the- Pure I plus have. the uh, peak performance. No, combo. I haven't done them to get- So- I mean, I've done them like 
Got to do them together, dude. I know. You said that. Oh, I know you said that. It's like I drugs. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a terrible commercial. <laughs> it's euphoric. Yeah. It's crazy. You take it. The combination feels incredible. You f- it is a euphoric. We would have never been able to be TV, dude. I know. Could you imagine? I know. <laughs> it like like ad. Yeah. We, lo- we lose partners like <laughs> yeah. on a weekly basis. Organifi.com. It works it's, that good. It's like drugs. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> stop it. No, you just, you. It, it's, a cr- it's a wonderful combination. It is so energetic and euphoric it's one of my favorite stacks that i've ever taken so i actually caught uh so ethan grabbed the the peak performance and he actually used that when i was gone and like <gasps> told me later he's like dad i hope you don't mind but i tried some of that's the got peak. caffeine in it yeah do you like it he loved it of course, of course. yeah he loved <laughs> he's it. He's like going off about what well, dude he <laughs> again i've been battling him about with, when he's hanging out with his friends with the g fuel and all this oh, other crap, nonsense yeah. that they're all drinking whatever oh are they all drinking that Oh my God! Are you kidding me? Yeah, all that stuff in in the prime and all those yeah. you know uh, caffeinated drinks that they're that are out there. So, uh, but he, I've, I mean, we've had a lot of discussions about it. He's been really good about like kind of like navigating through all that. But he still occasionally will have some some caffeine, and uh, so he was asking me all about it, like because at first, like, and this is again, Element T was another one that we were kind of like trying to discuss on when to take it and all that when he's like doing a lot of activities outside and he's like sweating a lot and uh so he was he was asking me a lot of health questions around like the peak performance mm. and all that and stuff what do you notice from it was so he was like on fire he i did was, all my homework he, yeah he went to gymnastics after that and he was like dad i was like so focused and, like i was going crazy you know like, <laughs> what? i'm like calm down like it's again like that's my first thing is like, okay, you're way too young. You don't need any of this stuff. But yes, there's a, a quite an a effect. Pure, he, he do, do, pure. do do middle schools and high school like allow kids to have walk around with like rock stars and energy? There's drinks? no specific banning. No. I mean, there's as no, far no, as I know, is, like, there, is there no real concern around that? I mean, you're talking about school, a 200 milligram in junior high. I, I know, think. I know. I saw the news on Prime. I know Prime's getting highlighted right now and like going through some shit with like a lawsuit. But I mean, they're no different than they rock. need. They need to. They need to put on drinks limitations because caffeine is dead. I mean, I don't understand. Again, to be fair about the peak performance, it's not that much caffeine. You can if you do like like three scoops, it's gonna you got some caffeine. No, he just did one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I specifically told him to dose it so that you could go low caffeine or high caffeine. Exactly. But I mean, like, it's not that like I, I didn't even get introduced to coffee till I was. 15 or 16. Well, coffee was is disgusting. Let's be honest. Black coffee as a kid. Who the hell drinks black <laughs> uh, coffee? And I did, it wasn't kid? black coffee. I had yeah, sugar, you, sugared up like crazy. Yeah, and right? cream. Yeah, yeah, so I didn't have... But I mean, I, I got... And it was when I started working the dairy at four in the morning before school. So it was like... That was the only reason. Necessary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, dude, was, I didn't start drinking coffee until I started working in a restaurant. And like, I was just... I would just get in there and... Uh, I remember one night before I'd stayed up way too late and then one of the cooks was like, oh, you gotta get some coffee. I'm like, I don't know tried it and then i didn't like it really but it, it worked and i was like wow this works so that association went nuts after I, that i wonder how many parents are actually really paying attention to this they I need th- to i i think so too i mean it's a drug. Enough, I caffeine is a very very powerful it's a very system. addictive drug yeah. i see how hard it is and it gets a hold of me as a grown-ass adult that's aware of it yeah. i can't you know, imagine boys they're competitive and and, and it feels good shit. Yeah. so yeah you got to calm them down my, my first experience with caffeine uh, this is like i was a sneaky ass kid we had a big family party and we always give espresso it's like part of the, like you have your dinner and you have your espresso and everybody has espresso and everybody left just a little bit of espresso on the bottom and it's always where the sugar is there's like a little sugar left so I was like, my cousins and I used to get together as nine boys, and we used to always play uh, tag or hide and seek. It was like our favorite game. But we would get crazy. Like, we're 10-year-olds, so we'd hide under cars in the sewer. We'd jump out of tree. It was crazy. It was fun, though. Real fun. <laughs> but I went around the table, and I picked up all these little espresso glasses that had a little bit of espresso, and I drank a bunch of them because it had the, the sugar. And I remember, like, I beat everybody that day <laughs> in tag, dude. I was just fl- on fire, jumping over cars, just doing crazy shit. <laughs> and I remember thinking it was a sugar. Yeah. And I didn't until later realize, like, oh, I had caffeine. That's yeah. what that's what gave me all that. I, you know, I'm surprised that we haven't read anything that shows some sort of correlation with the in, rise of ADHD in kids in the last technically de- ca- decade and decade and a half. Technically, uh, caffeine would help ADHD. Would help, yeah. yeah, that's like. Like riddle, not contribute is, to it. Yeah, yeah, it would help it. Really? Yeah, because yeah, real ADHD, there's a lot of stuff into it. Okay, but part of how you treat it would be to increase dopamine. 
Caffeine does that. So people with ADHD. Okay, but I feel like kids are getting diagnosed. You hear this many times, right? I've heard multiple parents say that, you know, a, a teacher has told them, oh, your kid can't sit still in class, this and that. Yeah. I think, it, I mean, could that not be because the kid's drinking fucking Red Bulls or drinking these energy drinks and he's having to sit in a classroom for hours all day? And uh, like, uh, maybe. I mean, I can only imagine if you gave me a rock star. And yeah, then maybe a kid with no ADHD, just a normal that's kid. That's right. So yeah. what I'm saying is that maybe how do we know it's not contributing? Yeah, exactly. Contributing uh, to the mis misdiagnose uh, uh, of of these kids. And then they go also go here's slap what we, Adderall. In my opinion, here's what's more likely is that kids are not getting good sleep because yeah, they're on their devices. That's what it is. And, and or if they have caffeine, they'll stay sleep. up and playing video games with each other yeah. until you know the cows come home and drink these drinks to, to keep it going so yeah. yeah that's the problem dude one more thing I want to ask you Justin did you see the article on what they're doing with the Loch Ness monster Oh, I, I saw it. tagged him. I saw yeah, that. somebody just tagged me that they're they're doing a full on uh, search, the biggest search ever <laughs> for the Loch Ness. Why? Monster. Like, what promoted? Is this because all the alien <laughs> stuff coming out? They're like, well, maybe everything's real. Yeah. Well, no, I think it's because there's a certain there's like a European type eel and a certain fish that they think may be in the Loch. They've said that. Yeah. That would. But I, when I was a kid, this is the hierarchy of. <laughs> Like conspiracy theory stuff that I was into. Okay. Oh, you it started you're in with the Loch Ness monster. It started at aliens was at the top. Oh, it was Big Bigfoot was close Bigfoot second. Me, well, you aliens, were in the woods. Yeah, exactly. that's because you were in the woods. Yeah. So Bigfoot and aliens were close, but okay. it was aliens, Bigfoot, Loch Ness monster, and okay. then it was like Mothman and all that weird shit. But it was <laughs> <laughs> Justin knows what, what, we get, what about Mobile Bembe? Yeah, <laughs> or, <laughs> Mobile Bembe. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's the the dinosaur. They Chupacabra found in was there too for a second, oh, but yeah. it was uh, it was Loch Ness monster was third and I loved reading about the Loch Ness monster. Nessie. So, so I went nerd there without telling me you're a nerd. I went there. Yeah. Well <laughs> I had a shirt too. So yeah. well Nessie. Adam, if a plesiosaurus still existed <laughs> thank today, you, thank you that Sal. would be crazy. Drop the knowledge. Come on, dude. Yeah. Because that's what it could be. You got trapped there. It's a very deep lake. That's right. Um, it's yeah, like one of the deepest in the world. That, you know. Yeah, dude. What is he eating though? Yeah. Like let's we gotta talk about that. Like People. there's literally okay. It's got to be something because so, <laughs> yeah. So before that, they really thought they had found it too, but it, it turns out it was like a man made, like submarine thing. Yeah. Like, they were using debris for that they eventually used as a host. They found the bottom. <laughs> but I mean, they try to keep that that legend, that lore alive there. And it's funny because it's, it's all tongue in cheek. It's in Scotland, right? Yeah. It's in Scotland. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I've been there actually twice now and it's, Doug, it's look up Plesiosaurus. I want Adam to see this is what beautiful. This place. is the theory. This is the, consp the, the big theory okay. is that Just get me up to speed the here. animal that they see, the creature that has been popping up in the lock for, I don't know how many years, uh, over a hundred years, more longer. Yeah. Uh, is a a non is a still alive. Is like the lock a, is the lock the name of the body of the water? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's also one in Iceland too that I mm. found out when I was there. There's another like a lake there that they had seen. Uh, and, and two Michigan or somewhere in the Midwest uh, as well. There's there's another like famous. Is there? Yes. There's oh. another famous uh, uh, sort of sea monstery yeah. kind of so that's a plesi plesiosaurus and uh that's a weird picture they're much bigger than that that's a stupid picture yeah. but they're big long neck and uh carnivorous so that'd be cool my favorite theory was though the um that uh, when you see a whale flipped upside down yeah. whale penis. <laughs> when it's mating <laughs> it's, it looks just like the head of uh, yeah. a Nessie but it's really yeah. just his penis so maybe there's a, a whale penis in the lock yeah, yeah. which would be also crazy a whale why why are you in the lock why is that there that's uh, crazy explain that yeah do we got a shout out for today uh yeah, I can. I want to shout out my friends. Uh, he just started a new music project, and he's like a good friend of mine, and it's really awesome. It's like uh, all the office. Uh, so the the show, the office. He took like the theme songs of all these. And oh, that he, was your he friend. Metal. You I like, saw you. One share of my that. good friends, like from college, like best friends and like he literally would never put anything out he's like one of those guys that makes like amazing things he's super talented but will never share it with anybody no. you know and so he just put it out there on spotify uh so they're called the scranton stranglers oh, wow. <laughs> so it's it's like hilariously awesome and he's super talented and go follow him. now awesome. what's what's the uh okay we were just talking about copyright trademark stuff today like what's the legal like he's kind of figuring that out yeah, <laughs> yeah. like we'll, we'll see what happens we'll find out when we get him popular. I don't know if he's like making, he's not making money off of it. So I think that's where he's okay, but I don't know how that's going to play out. Maybe like, a, maybe, 
<laughs> Maybe he'll do a vanilla ice there. Remember when, when, it, yeah, when it Ice bro, Ice Baby? You shout yeah, yeah. him out, he gets arrested. He, he adds one <laughs> extra beat. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. ding. Yeah. It's different. It's different. It's different. You guys got to see that clip. So that flew. Like, you know, that, yeah. that passed for I know. sure. Yeah. Check this out. You're not what you eat. Technically, it's you are what you digest. Now, here's the problem. If you're a fitness-minded individual, you can eat a lot of protein. Uh, you can bump up the calories. Maybe you're doing a reverse diet. And the problem is sometimes it's hard to digest. Well, digestive enzymes helps to break down food into usable parts. And there is some research to suggest that fitness-minded people probably need more digestive enzymes. Anyway, there's a company called Masszymes that makes digestive enzymes for fitness-minded individuals. And if you go through our link, you'll get 10% off. Go check them out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off any order. All right, back to the show. Favorite exercise and drills to activate your glutes. Activate your glutes. All right. Like, you know, like the episode activate. we got coming up. Yeah, we did. Okay, so... Unless you have, if you're a normal person, average person, you don't have trouble connecting to your glutes or feeling your glutes. The best exercises are the ones you, that everybody talks about, right? Barbell squats, deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts. Um, those are phenomenal butt building exercises. Lunges, those are good too. Now, if you have issues connecting to your glutes or your quad dominant, like you do squats and your quads respond, but your glutes don't respond so much, then hip thrusts are phenomenal because... They really do help people activate, connect, to, and uh, you know stimulate their glutes for muscle growth. So I would say for some for this person asking, it sounds to me like you may have issues getting your glutes to respond. You may be you know quad dominant in that sense. Then I would say uh, hip thrusts. Hip thrusts are, are the best for that. So I would answer that as if this question was more, what's the best exercise if I have a hard time feeling it? But if you're asking for the best drills, I think of priming stuff, yeah. right? So I, sure. what, what comes yeah, to mind for me, is, which by the way, is in the same vein as what you're saying, which is, I would say a floor bridge. Uh, I think yeah. uh, one of the best, an isometric hold at the top, in a floor bridge is one of the best ways to teach a client mm -hmm. how to activate and feel their glutes. Mm -hmm. And so I would do say five of those, right? Five isometric holds at the top. How long of, do you have them hold it for at the top? Five, five seconds. Just squeeze yeah, it hard. Yeah, yeah squeeze yeah, it real same. hard for five seconds. Re let it come all the way down, back up, yep. hold five seconds, right. intensify, back down five it, times. As you intense know. as you can make it. That's right. right. The, yeah, the yeah. Point real intense. It. Squeezing it as hard as you can. I mean, if they do a good job of that, sometimes people actually get sore just from that. Yeah. So uh, if you do a good job as a, as a coach and trainer, you cue that, you get them to feel that, and then they go into a more traditional movement that is that is primarily for your glutes, but they have a hard time feeling it, like let's say you know deadlifts or squats or something like that. So that would be my go-to move. And what it does person. is it just all it does. It's not it's really nothing. It's not like activating fibers differently or anything like that. Really, what it does is it just allows you to connect and feel what the glutes should feel like when they're activated. So then what it does is it, it ever so subtly encourages a change in your form and technique. So then you can move in the squat in a way that, oh, there's my glutes. I can feel them now. Now the squats are hitting the areas that I want. Well, you gave a great example in the, yeah. the upcoming Brett Contreras interview that we did, which is like, it's just like when you had a client and you couldn't get them to retract their shoulders to squeeze their mid back and you put your finger in their back. I mean, you putting your finger on their mid back doesn't activate any fibers. No. It wasn't that their back wasn't firing or anything like that. You just, you gave them some sort of Physical feedback. feedback. Yeah. yeah, feedback. So they, they understand, they make a better under connection of like, oh, that's what it should feel like. That's basically what you're doing with that floor bridge is you're squeezing that glute at the top of the hip extension and you're like oh that's because those exercises deadlifts and squats is a hip extension yeah. right so that's what that movement is you're just showing them like this is how you should feel that at the end of the hips and then just helps that that client make a better connection yeah one more thing to add if this is a weak body part for you and this is true for anybody who has a body part that's lagging start your workouts out with focusing on that body part it, it makes such a big difference so much of the adaptation goes to the exercises you start your workout with uh, versus the ones you end with, that if this is a, a body part of focus for you, your leg workouts should start with glute focus Your or your full body workouts should start with glute focus and then move on to the rest. Or the pencil test. Next question is from Jonathan Sosh. 
What tips and advice do you have for the behind the head barbell shoulder press? I love this. Okay, so people, so this exercise went from being super popular to becoming super demonized. Yeah. To now it's somewhere in the middle. Okay, so it's a shoulder press, standing or seated, and it's behind the neck. Okay, so it requires better mobility, control, and stability than a traditional overhead press, which already requires a lot of stability um, and mobility. And this is why it's got it's gotten demonized because the if you've never practiced this exercise or you have shoulder mobility issues, mm. it could definitely Which be a challenge. The majority, I would say, of people probably are dealing with a bit of yes. shoulder mobility issues and that needs to be addressed. I think it's a very valuable exercise. I think that there's um, definitely like um, a way to get there in terms of like, qualifications. So to be able to retract your shoulders all the way, not be in a position where your head's super protruding forward yeah. and your shoulders are, you know, a bit protracted. So, um, but in terms of like working your way there, it's like a lot of different things your body's capable of. Your body's capable of being stable and strong in a range of motion. It's a valid exercise. Yeah. So I went on a kick uh, after all my you know, bodybuilding meathead training to really working on this because I, I lack the ability to do it. And then I wanted to regain this. And what it looked like for me was the first thing I focused on was the Z press. Uh, and when I Z pressed, I would actually hold and stabilize at the top, right? So I would press up, I would stabilize the top and really getting to where I can, I can pull the shoulder blades back. Like Justin's alluding to started with that. I got, I got better and better at that. Then I moved to the seated behind like a military uh, press with just the bar. And, and I actually would come all the way down. So I would be sitting down. I'd sit upright, activate my core. I would, I would press. And then I'd actually let the bar actually rest on my traps. Like if I was doing a squat mm. and, and I would almost, I'd reset every rep. So I'd come all the way down, let's sit there, and then I would uh, get myself back up with good posture, pull the shoulder blades back up, press it all the way up, and then I would set it back down again. And every time I'm setting it back down, I'm, re I'm emphasizing uh, 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 activating my core, pulling the shoulder blades back, and just getting better and better at that pathway of, of moving it. So I like the... Um, resting between reps and and we're kind of resetting between every, every yeah. rep. So what's cool about the the behind first off the behind the neck press is not a bodybuilding exercise, although bodybuilders popularize it. This is a classic <clears throat> exercise that was been used in Olympic lifting for a long time. Yep. Olympic lifters still do this because it helps them with uh, some of their big lifts. Um, and they'll do it in a way to where they're, they're doing it as like a power a exercise. Press. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and it's, it's exceptional. It's explosive. Yeah. It's, it's exceptional. What's different about the behind the neck shoulder press versus in a traditional overhead shoulder press. When you're doing a behind the neck shoulder press, you are really emphasizing, if you do it right, scapular mobility. If you're working the shoulder or the shoulder joint, there's two things to focus on. There's the humerus, which is the upper arm. And then there's a the scapula, right? The shoulder blade that has to work in tandem with the upper arm in order to perform movements. This is the shoulder, this is what's, what makes the shoulder such a versatile, mobile joint. It's what allows us to throw with accuracy and do all kinds of different crazy things. It's because it's so complex. The behind the neck shoulder press encourages retraction and then upward and downward rotation of the scapula. So if you were to look at someone's back and you look at the shoulder blades, like these flat bones, First off, you have to pull them back and retract them to do the behind the neck shoulder press. Otherwise, you'll hit your head. And then as you press, you have to be able to outwardly rotate and down, excuse me, upwardly rotate and downward rotation of the scapula while maintaining somewhat of retraction. This is an important part of scapular mobility. Most of us never practice this or train this. So when you do this, it's really, really hard. Yeah. So start really light. In fact, I recommend people start with a stick. Thank you. I was, uh, I was going to deliberately talk about that because that's one of the ways that uh, would I would definitely like take somebody through that process is to be able to create tension first and foremost, yes. which is like you grip the bar and you're going to actually kind of pull a bit outward yes. as you're pulling down towards your back. And then you're going to maintain and, and control that tension throughout the entire range of motion. Uh, so that way you're, it just communicates to your body that everything is accounted for and it's stable and secure. And so that way, you know, you're, you're, you're able to produce the amount of adequate amount of force in every inch of that range of motion. Yeah. And I would say to somebody start super light, super maybe with no weight, 
you'll still get a pump. People trying to develop oh. their shoulders, do this exercise right instead of heavy. Do it with perfect form, which yeah. will make the exercise challenging. You will get a delt pump like nothing else. This is why it's one of my favorite shoulder exercises. Massive pump. And the, the, the motivation to do this, or at least the motivation for me, was not trying to target or hit the shoulders differently. It was to improve my mobility. That was the kick that I went on after training like a bodybuilder for so many years was, man, I really shortened my range of motion up on a lot of these movements that are important for shoulder health mobility, right? So this was like, okay, here's a great exercise. I've lost the ability to do, I want to regain that. So when I'm doing it, yeah, I eventually started with just a bar and then worked to tens and then 10, 20 and then 30 and then, 40, and then eventually got to the point where I could do 185 like that. But it was a long process and it wasn't focused on weight. It wasn't about Oh, I want to, can I get more and more weight? It was, can I control that really well all the way through 400 and not deviate? Like you'll notice what will happen is you're going to watch yourself want to naturally like arch the back and so like that. And so the head I, jetting forward is a big one. Yeah, That's the one you got to pay. Yeah. You'll enough. feel the head. And th this is why too, again, I, I like to, to reset every time mm -hmm. reminds me kind of how uh, you ever watched Lane train for his deadlift, like his one rep max. He's constantly like resetting in between each rep instead of like continuous rep after rep. I like, because there's so many things I'm thinking about with my core, my head, my shoulders, the scapula. I like resetting and doing all the things Justin was saying is like thinking about where I'm positioned, I'm pulling kind of across the bar and then like, then press again, yeah. come down. And set under traps. Yep. That's the way I like to do it. I don't yep. do it any other way. I, I don't see any value in fact of doing it other way, but I set it on my traps, get in position, press up. The pump with lightweight cool. on this is incredible. And the other benefit you're going to find with your overhead press is just how much more vertical yes. your, your pressing will get yes. and how much more stabilized you will be with it in the overhead position. Totally. Next question is from Just Christina. Which of your programs is suited to perform during pregnancy? All right. Here's the funny thing about, uh, about pregnancy is uh, you can – the potential – is super high for lots of different movements. Now, there are some general things you want to potentially look out for. Uh, for example, split stance exercises start to become difficult when your belly gets in the way. You know, flexion of the lumbar spine becomes impossible. Um, so co certain core exercises. But you could do a lot, and it depends on the individual. Somebody who's really fit, trained themselves properly, who knows how to avoid exercises where your literal anatomy starts to get in the way because of a growing baby, you can do almost anything. Okay, but the, to answer this question, generally speaking, we do have programs that are, like I said, generally probably more suited for people going through pregnancy than others. Um, starter would be the first place I would go. That's what I had Katrina do. Yeah, starter mm -hmm. would be the first place I would go. And then second, you know, if you're really fit and you got you know how to modify your movement if you need to, MAPS Anabolic is even fine. Well, the um, good part about MAPS Anabolic is you can do the at-home option, which yes. is all dumbbell driven. And so yes. like to, to avoid a lot of those issues where you're going to have a barbell that's like you can't really perform good angles with it as much, you can actually uh, replace that with dumbbells. The real key is wh what you are doing leading into pregnancy on what I would tell you as a client. You could run MAPS Aesthetic. You could run um, yeah. almost any of our programs if you were already running them and you had been doing stuff yeah. like that leading up into it. And what I always tell my pregnant clients is our goal right now is to maintain the strength that we yeah, have. Yeah, don't try and hit PRs yeah. in pregnancy. Yeah, I don't, not, that's the mistake. We don't want to try. Intensity. Yeah, we're not trying to make gains. We're not trying to lose a bunch of weight or body weight at all. We're not trying to make strength gains. Like I want to maintain your strength and mobility. And so if that means we are following whatever MAPS program, I'm going to pretty much keep that going. And I'm not going to really, and then modify just specific movements that, like you said, like a, a lunge gets hard when you got, you know, seven, seven month, you know, into your, your third trimester, right. To do certain exercises like that. So I might modify that, but for the most part, you'd be surprised what you do, where I would tell someone for sure, go to starter is if you are just now starting your weight training program and you haven't been training, say, for the last year or two years. Or and po you're also post postpartum, I would say, too. All, that, yeah. Also, Beautiful for that's that. how yeah. we kind of introduced it. Once you get it. cleared, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, I, here's, here's a couple special considerations, although it's not across the board. You know, jumping, running, plyometrics starts to become more challenging on your body. Um, it starts to become more challenging on your core and how your body supports uh, the baby as it's growing. Um, and then single leg exercises, uh, believe it or not, can become an issue 
for lots of pregnant women because of the torsion it places on the pelvis and because there are uh, the, the pubic symphysis, uh, the, it starts to loosen up as hormones come into the body. I think it's called, I think the hormone, I can't remember the name of the hormone, relaxant, something like that, but it loosens the joints up, makes everything looser, but it can also cause this kind of pubic pain that women will get. And single leg exercises causes twisting and torsion on that, which can make it worse. So bilateral exercises tend to become more appropriate as you move into the later stages uh, of pregnancy. Next question is from Melanie Jebbins. How do you train yourself on the skill of running again? Well, is that a personal question or is that general? Because personally, I don't. <laughs> I don't train myself on the, something I should do for sure. Like any skill, you have to start very slow and you have to remember that fatigue is your enemy. Like so if you get tired, the skill is out the window and then it's just your body's going to move the way it wants. So how would you approach running if you haven't run in a long time? Um, and you want to develop the skill of it. Uh, well, first, the best way to do would be to hire a running coach would be ideal. I actually recommended a few clients do this who really wanted to run. And I talked to them about the skill of running and look, you haven't run since you were a kid or and you got to really figure that out. And I had them hire a running coach who trained them on a track and it was night and day, yeah. night and day, because the running coach, like I am with, with exercises, the running coaches with running. So they would watch their form and their technique. They would make sure that they worked on how the Have foot's Have you ever around. been coached by a running coach, Adam? No, I haven't, but I'm familiar with it and I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And I've also, we've also got places over here in the Bay where you could go into like, I think the place was called Running Revolution, um, where they would actually, they'll video you while you run on a treadmill and then they'll break it, break it down. Well, they'll, oh, cool. they'll show you like, Oh, look at you have, you know, internal rotation on this side and your, your heel striking like this. And so, yeah. um, if I was going to get into running, um, because running is a sport. Okay. Just like yeah. CrossFit. It's like, if I was going to get into the sport of running, <clears throat> uh, I would take it that seriously where I'd want to get assessed and have somebody break down my mechanics and tell me, hey, you have uh, too much of a forward lean. You mm -hmm. need to be more upright. You need to you need to work on your right foot. You have to learn how to run. Gait, yeah, yeah. Your, your stride, yeah. Your, your your get off, like all these things. Like I, I actually worked with, um, the reason I asked is I, I went through like a year where I was trying to get faster, like by all means necessary to make the football team. And uh, I worked with like a track, just the San Jose city college right there. I worked mm. with their track team and like, we had to go through like so many mechanical uh, drills and things Did and, it help? and it was very specific. Yeah. And I gained, well, I, I gained, I lost time on my 40. So I got down to like a four, seven, five, like from like a, wow. a four, nine. So. Oh, that's a big jump. And you're yeah. already an athlete. Yeah. And we did a lot of training with resistance with, with the pool. And like, we worked a lot. It was a lot of, a lot of it for me was stride. Uh, and, and so like to learn how to really like promote that length and, and to, to be able to gather enough, um, uh, enough like ground and, and to really like make a dent in that direction, like took a lot of effort. So it's, it's a definite, my only point to this is a definite skill to your point and, and it being like yeah. a sport, like that's how you got to treat it. If you don't run and you haven't won regularly and you're not good at it because you haven't done it and you decide to do running as a workout. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to hurt yourself. It's almost guaranteed you're going to start to compile injuries because it's high impact. It's repetitive. You're probably going to do it to fatigue because you're doing it for a workout and you haven't practiced it. You don't have good technique. So you're going to hurt yourself. So if you want to run to work out and you want to get to the point where you can enjoy, if you ever watch a really good runner, it's like you're jealous. Like, wow, that person looks like they're just enjoying it. And they feel so good. And so whatever. It's not just the stamina piece. I'm going to tell you guys right now, Gaining the stamina is the easy part. That's going to be easy. There's yeah. other ways you can gain stamina. That'll happen in a week or two. Yeah, you can gain stamina doing lots of other things. If you want to run for your workouts, you need to make you need to treat it like a skill, which means you're not going to go out and run to work out. It's a sport. You're practicing it, it. It's so funny. It's like what you in and the the more aggressive you get about running, meaning like you do it for miles and miles or a, an hour plus, you really or you start doing it almost every single day. It's no different than you deciding all of a sudden you're going to play basketball or football or tennis or anything else like that. And if you 
have never been taught how to do any of those sports correctly, the thought that you're going to do it well and you're not potentially going to injure us is silly. And nobody would think that. Nobody would think if you have no experience playing basketball, do you think going and, and, and running pickup games like every single day is probably a good strategy? And to think that you won't get hurt, you're probably going to get hurt. Yeah. So the running is, is no different. I th it's just because it's become so popular. Well, it's just we value the fatigue, the sweat, and the soreness, and we don't consider it a skill. We just think, because we think, oh, I can run. Well, okay, yeah, technically you could you could do what you what looks like running, but your your technique is so bad that if you do it as a workout, you're going to hurt. Your knees are gonna hurt, it or really, your hip, it, or your it, ankle. Bro, or before the seventies, it wasn't a thing. Yeah, well, no, you see people running outside. That wasn't a thing. No, there was a book that was written. I can't remember. The running, name of it. it was uh, born, to run, yeah, born to Run. Yeah, Born to Run. Is that what it was? Yeah. No, was it Born to Run. That was one of the. No, books. that wasn't the one of the. That 70s. was not the revolution. Running Revolution. Yeah, it was Running it's Revolution. Something like that. Running, yeah. so, born to Run. Running Revolution. I don't remember. It's got what. like a red tennis. But it's shoe in the. It. It's in the. It was in the seventies. Yeah, it started yeah. the whole Running Revolution. And before that, we didn't even do it. No. And so it hasn't even been that long. We literally have like don't even have a full generation of people that realize that. Oh, it was just called the Complete Book of Running. That awesome. right there uh, changed everything. By the way, there's two things. 1977. Wasn't even, so it was like the 80s even. There's so two things. So I, I, I love the like fitness history, right? There's two, two moments in culture that made running become this like way people worked out that they, they just chose, this is what I'm going to do to work out. It was that book. And then it was also the movie Rocky. The movie Rocky, oh, yeah. yes, yeah. like him running and those scenes are so and that the streets. And yes, the, everybody. Well, it's all around the same time, right? Correct. Early eighties. That no late seventies or yeah, late yeah. 70s, and that started 80s. a revolution in yeah. running. Before that, you, why if you didn't went, Forrest Gump do that? I know. You know, I mean? by that point, everybody did it. <laughs> yeah, they were over it. <laughs> I know. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. We've made a lot of guides that can help you with your fitness goals, and we made it so they're free. So go check them out. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 